So there are our tech folks are watching the chat. So if you have an issue, they'll try and keep an eye on you there. But um, but for now, we're going to do our best to just have a Sunday service together. So I invite you to settle in, quiet your phones, make yourself at home. We'll remember that good Zoom etiquette is to keep yourself muted. Sometimes during a service, people accidentally unmute themselves and our host uh, will mute you again. If you're on a phone, that's star six um, to mute again if you accidentally got unmuted. There will be a time in the service where we celebrate our joys and concerns and uh, that will be chat joys and concerns instead of candles or speaking aloud. So for everyone who can access that, we're, uh, we're grateful. And if you can't, we're holding you in our hearts no matter what. We also, uh, for our last announcement, we want to say that once this is all over, we want to hear how it was for you. We want to know what worked and what didn't, what you liked about it, what you'd like to see happen differently. And we'd also like you to know that uh, you really need to be gentle with us at the same time. That uh, 10 days ago, we didn't know we'd be doing this. And so we've been on a very steep learning curve. So we would love to hear from you. We want your feedback so we can continue to do better, um, but be gentle. And, uh, and I'll apologize ahead of time if I knew we were gonna be doing um, video worship i would have got a better laptop or a better camera i know i'm kind of grainy and super bright uh, we've done the best we can we wanted to have some music that was familiar and uh so brenda is going to play a piece of music for us as our prelude um, Westwood musician, our choir accompanist, Sheila Kaloran, recorded a couple of pieces of music for us, and we're very grateful to her. We can't sing on, um, on Zoom together with our microphones unmuted because there's lag time and there's kind of a cacophony. But with your mics muted, if you want to sing along, if you recognize this piece of music, Brenda is going to play our prelude now. Uh, number 188, come, come, whoever you are. Thank you, Brenda. If you were watching gallery view, you could see that so many of our mouths were moving and we were singing along and we we're all singing at different times. So maybe it's kind of like having an automatic zoom round. <sighs> to begin this service, uh, we wish to acknowledge that the land on which our two congregations gather is Treaty 6 territory and a traditional meeting ground and home for many Indigenous peoples, including Cree, Soto, Blackfoot, Métis, and Nakota Sioux. As treaty people, we work to respond faithfully to the 94 calls to action that came out of the Truth and Reconciliation hearings, and to learn to be good and responsible neighbors to the people who predate us in this place. Welcome, friends from near and far, Welcome to the members and friends of the Unitarian Church of Edmonton, the Westwood Unitarian Congregation, to newcomers who are exploring with us today, and to the loved ones and old friends that we can see zooming in from around the country. Edmonton Unitarians welcome you, whatever your heritage, whatever your faith, whomever you love. 
you are welcome here today, wherever you may be this morning. Now I'm gonna light our chalice, the little candle. I'm gonna put it in a bigger candle, tuck it back here. We believe that what we need most today is to see one another and to make a connection. I see some of you lighting your chalices at home. That the best thing we can do today is to take comfort in being together in seeing one another's faces. We, we're so glad that you're on this Zoom technology so that you can see that this is something you can use as well. We can phone each other, we can wave from across the yard. We just think that when we're isolated and when we're apart, what we really need is to be as close as possible. So we light our chalice this morning in the spirit of connection. One thing we have in common amongst our two congregations, which um, turns out to not be the most ideal timing in the in the world is that March is our stewardship or canvas month. We're not going to talk about money today. Good. Yeah. <laughs> there is an, enough anxiety around that. There's enough uncertainty in our circumstances. This is a super complicated time and we want you to know that we believe that we'll be able to work things out together, that this morning is not a time to talk about money. So if you're worrying about resources or work or business or church pledges or stewardship, we invite you to just lay that down now for a minute. Let it be. We're all gonna figure out how to pivot in this new world. This morning, we do want to lift up the serendipity of our two stewardship themes, though. The UCE Canvas theme is Here Together. And the Westwood Canvas theme, stewardship theme, is Grow the Magic. And I don't know about you, but doesn't this feel like we're growing the magic, figuring out how to be here together? So I know a favorite part uh, both of our for both of our congregations is candles of joys and concern and we know this will be imperfect in this format because folks on the phone can't type into the chat not everybody on a device can type into the chat if you can if you'd like to we um, we're going to play a piece of music and we'd invite you to type into the chat your candles of joy or concern and people, if you can see the chat, you can watch it and see what your friends and loved ones are writing. If you can't type in, we invite you to just listen to the music. Sheila has recorded an American folk song for us called The Water Is Wide. So we'll just sit and hold one another in love and care and uh, have this time of candles of joy and concern. There you go, Brenda. Thank mm -hmm. you.
there you go. Sorry, talking with my mic muted. Brenda is going to share a slide with us now. If you can see it, it has the affirmation that um, that we say at Westwood after the candle lighting. You're welcome with your muted microphones to join and say it with me as I read it out loud. May the light of these okay. candles inspire us to use our power to heal and not to harm, to help and not to hinder, to serve the spirit of truth in loving affection and trusting hope. We hold everyone and their cares and concerns in our heart right now. We know for people who were struggling before the pandemic, it hit that this is an even harder time than it usually is and for all the people who are separated from loved ones whether it's by hospital limitations or senior home limitations we know that everybody is just trying to protect everyone as best we can we just hold you all in love and care together I want you to know I didn't read the chat as you were typing. Um, it, somebody is keeping track and I'm gonna read it later and follow up as best I can. But I started to read it and I knew I was just gonna cry all the way through it. So, so we'll come back to that later. We would like you to know that we are recording this service. And we're going to put um, the essential pieces of it available later on Facebook and our YouTube channels so that people can hear them if they weren't able to log in this morning. Um, another happy thing I would like to say to you is that a minute ago I saw that we had 101 participants. And one of the things we know that Zoom has been doing is if you have a free zoom account you can hold a meeting for 40 minutes and then it boots you out but this week it hasn't been booting people out it's been giving people extra time so that's a great way to connect with your loved ones and i'm guessing that maybe this morning they've also opened the limits a little bit so that's exciting to see that 101 people got in We want you to be able to hear from some of the familiar faces in your congregation. So our two presidents are going to uh, speak to us now. So I'd like to invite Karen Mills to unmute yourself and to address our shared congregation. Good morning, everybody. Um, I am so grateful to be here with you this morning. And first want to say thank you to all the people who've worked so hard to make this happen. Um, from the UCE side, particularly Karen Belita and Scott Harrison, who run all the how to Zoom tutorials and done hours and hours and hours of helping people set up their equipment and walk through. And um, I know there are as many people on the Westwood side that have done that too. So thank you so much. It's, it's great. Um, and I'm grateful to be living in a time when we have technology that allows us to connect and do this and stay in touch. And um, <clears throat> I guess happy to be, you know, in a place where we have lots of food, lots of clean water, fantastic healthcare, um, and grateful for those who are following the recommended practices to keep everybody safe and healthy. So huge gratitude this morning. And I think this pandemic is demonstrating how really connected we are and also how connected we need to be. And while it's an anxious time, it's also a time where people are really stepping up and um, just showing the best part of themselves. And so I'm sure you've all heard the stories of the Italian neighbors singing to one another across the streets and the uh, Spanish folks doing the aerobics class in their apartment block with the instructor on the roof. And, um, so, you know, we're creative and that's great. And we're hearing great stories even from our own city, uh, you know, of people who are leaving their phone numbers and addresses in their neighbor's mailboxes in case they need groceries or errands. 
um, people who are putting little notes and pictures and things in their windows to cheer up their neighbors. And uh, yesterday there was even an opera singer who gave a concert from her balcony in the river valley. So, you know, we're going to get through this and it's going to be, it's going to be hard, but it's going to be okay. And it's, uh, it's the, the acts of kindness and gratitude, I think, that will pull us all through that together. And I think it's also a reminder that, you know, we've, we've always known that our congregations are not just our buildings um, and that we're not just on Sunday. And it's, it's all of us and it's every day. And uh, I think this is a, a good time to show that. So may we all be well, may we hold each other in community and may we take the strength that we get from each other out into the world. Thank you, Karen. And now I'd like to invite Lorian Kennedy from Westwood to unmute yourself and, and speak to us. Thank you, Anne. Thank you, Karen. That was exactly what I would have said. <laughs> so I won't say it again. But welcome to everybody. I'm just so happy that we have so many people joining us. It's really so exciting and heartwarming. And I'm going to try hard not to cry. Um, but we've all been going through lots of new learning and I think this is showing us new things we'll be able to use afterwards as well. It is a challenge. It's a challenge to keep your spirits up. So thank you to everybody who's doing this stuff. It's so important to, to do that. I found a poem that um, just speaks really directly to this. I'm going to read it to you. It's not very long. It's from a book called Spilling the Light by Teresa Soto. And it's called Reversals of Fortune. People wake up to ordinary days all the time and then somehow, as though things were just too peaceful, they experience drastic reversals of fortune. The car resting on its roof, the fall, the broken bone, the less than hoped for grade, the broken heart when a pet dies. You get it. You never know what's in a day, except you. You are the golden thread running through. I know that these reversals will test you. You may move through burdened with a fresh wet grief, or for now, you may arrive at this moment unscathed. What you need to know is that there's nothing larger than the love that is your destiny. And the love may at times feel opaque and distant, like a looming thundercloud too far to reach. If that's too hard to locate, find your breath, a thread of your life. Find your community, friendly face and open hand. What's true is that some changes call for every skill we possess. The deeper truth remains. Changes will eventually change. Let your heart flex, let it grow. Allow a reversal to be a moment in which you are the constant while you give yourself kindness and heaping joyful love. Thanks, Anne. Pass it back to you. Thank you, Lorian, and thank you, Karen. I want to lift up our boards of trustees who in the last two weeks have held emergency meetings, have made difficult decisions, have had to wrestle with questions of justice versus spirit. What does it mean to close a building? And like Karen said, and like I'm going to say again before we're done, it's not our buildings that keep us connected. It's our people. It's our relationships. So somebody posted um, on the chat that just popped up something about a copyright issue. The Reverend Teresa Inez Soto has granted permission for anyone, anywhere to use their um, poetry in worship broadcasting during this time. The, issue, uh, the issues are around a recording and, and broadcasting and they have granted freedom to everybody to use it in this time. There's a lot of that happening, musicians and writers and things sharing their work.
what were you doing when you realized what it meant to be in a pandemic? Two weeks ago, we just started to launch stewardship in our congregations. 10 days ago, I had meetings and appointments all over town. Five days ago, I had a dentist appointment. And by the time I got home, their office was closed to everything except emergencies. Two weeks ago, our congregations didn't know we would be closing. I thought that I was going to be visiting at UCE this morning and that the Westwood Choir was going to be doing the Westwood Choir service. Ten days ago, we still thought we had time. A week ago, we thought we'd record a service in the sanctuary at UCE and broadcast it out to people. And only seven days ago, we decided to work together to bring you this service. I have had a Zoom account for nine days. I've been on lots of Zoom meetings, but I've never run a service or run a meeting myself. So all of this feels a little bit like a miracle to me. I'm thinking it's probably fair to say that none of us at, at this worship this morning have lived through a pandemic. We couldn't have anticipated what we would feel like, what would be happening, the way our neighbors and our communities would respond and behave. You think about the things we wish we would have done if we'd known this was, was bright on the immediate horizon. I'd have got a better microphone or a better uh, camera. I'd have tidied my office. I think I'd have tried to lure all my kids to move back into the house. If we had it all to do over again, I'm sure we go through those, those thoughts in our minds about what we would do differently, what we would put in. We couldn't have anticipated how uh, all the grocery store goofiness would go on and how the people have just been a little bit bananas. And I wanna say in that spirit of being gentle with one another, that when we don't know how to respond in a scary time, people feel the need to do something. So running to the grocery store and stocking up on toilet paper might be the only activity that somebody could figure out how to do that day. So let's be kind and gentle with our neighbors and our friends. We were, we were lucky at our house, we buy toilet paper when it's on sale, so we had lots. Um, but there's lots of things we don't have. I know for lots of people, one real concern is medications. I've seen um, it announced from the provincial government yet that they might start, pharmacies might start to limit prescription refills to 30 days at a time just to stop there being any shortfalls. I have a remarkable amount of faith in the way that Alberta is responding. We have this wonderful woman who keeps popping into our TVs and our screens every day, giving us updates, telling us what's happening, telling us to stay home. I feel like our people are taking it seriously. I see our communities helping one another, people bringing people groceries, people helping people get the things they need. Please know that within these two congregations, there are ways to get help. Reach out to your board, reach out to me, reach out to the people you know and trust and love. We've got folks, we've all got folks who are ready to deliver some stuff if you can't go to the store if it's not safe at all for you to go out, if you've got a depressed immune system. We want everybody to act a little bit like they have a depressed immune system. Just stay home and stay safe as much as you're able. 
And let's say this, have a little prayerful moment and hold in our heart. I know among you, there are some of you who are going to fit this category. There are people among us who are still working and working with the public, who are working in our grocery stores. I had never thought about grocery stores as an essential service before. And aren't they the most essential service right now, grocery stores and pharmacies and healthcare? People who are serving in healthcare, working in our healthcare facilities, the people who are worried right now, waiting for results that, they, um, that they've had testing or that they're waiting for testing. We've got people in both congregations who are in this situation. So we're just holding everybody in our hearts and doing what we can to help and to stay safe at the same time. The topic this morning at UCE was going to be something called Spring Forward. And we were going to talk about when that bursting energy of spring comes up, what happens if you don't have the same bursting energy? How do you, how do you manage when everything is, uh, the sun's coming out and it's starting to be green and people are out walking and hiking and doing things and you don't feel up to that yourself? and how to help people who don't feel up to that. And it's not that far from where we're gonna go. We're not gonna talk exactly about that. But this is the first Sunday of spring and the sun is out. And we know that the sun is a great healer. It's a virus killer. You know, it's a wonderful thing that we you can hang our clothes on a line and the sun does remarkable things. And it lifts our spirits, a little sunshine on our heads, lifts our spirits, does wonderful things. Taking a walk, even just getting outside into your backyard if you're needing to not encounter any people at all. Watching our animals. I don't know how many of you have animals that have started to get spring goofy already. They start leaping around and bouncing and getting all excited. I want to talk about the fragility of spring. So if you think about the excitement we feel when we're in our yards or we're walking down the street and we see those little tiny green shoots start to poke up. Those first things like daffodils or crocuses or those little green bits that start to poke through. And I want to remind you that those little first shoots are fragile and tender. So we know that when we get excited and if our garden has say dandelions poking through, if we go and we pull away the mulch and we clear away the snow, that all of a sudden those little shoots are vulnerable because it's Alberta and it's Edmonton and we're gonna get another freeze and we're going to get another snow. And so if you take little tiny delicate shoots and you pull away all their protection, then they're extra vulnerable in this time. This is the time when they need to start growing, but they need the reassurance of the mulch or that snow cover that's still around them. Let's think of ourselves like little green tiny shoots. We're brand new at this. We want to be living our regular lives or living a new dream or putting into place things that we had planned for. And instead we find ourselves in completely uncharted territory. So don't hesitate to wrap yourself in protective mulch. Do the things you need to do to be safe and warm and comforted. We don't have to be heroic right now. Of 
course, we all need to choose how it is we want to be. And we Unitarian Universalists, we have aspirations to be our best selves all the time. Sometimes we're a little perfectionist. We don't have to be perfect in this moment. We need to be gentle and kind with ourselves and with our loved ones. Some of you are alone in a house. That's hard. Some of you are with your whole family in your house. That can be hard too. A lot of time in a small space and no breathing room. Remember about the protective mulch, about the snow cover you might need. Sometimes it's okay to just need to go to another room and be by yourself, to just sit by yourself. Turn off the news. There is no new information that's going to change that you need to be home and safe. Another thing about little green shoots in the spring is that they're kind of like new ideas. If you handle them too much, they bruise and they damage. So I've seen some of you posting pictures on Facebook about planting things, like starting seedlings in your houses, getting ready for garden time. I think garden time is going to be really good for us, for folks who have access to that. But even a little, little pot on your windowsill. And if you're able to plant some seedlings and have those signs of life popping up in your house, that's a really good thing for us. But we all know that once, you know, I've got some, uh, some basil and some cilantro planted, and, I, and they're not up yet, but I know that once they start popping up, those little shoots start popping up, if I start handling them too much, they're not gonna make it. We have this tendency as people, when something gets hard or it's new or it's complicated, we wanna solve it right away. And the coronavirus is not something we can solve today. We can follow the best health advice coming from our, from our leaders. But many of us have these ideas popping up. I'm going to paint that basement room since I'm at home anyway. I'm going to clean out my office. How many times have I said that? I'm going to sort through all my clothes and get them ready for recycling when the, recy when the, when the thrift stores open again. I'm going to tidy my kitchen. I'm going to learn to make things I've never made before. I'm going to get out that slow cooker. These are great ideas. And if they bring you joy, if they bring you comfort, if they bring you support, that's a great thing to do. And if they feel like just one more pressure or burden, forget about it. Just do the things you need to do to stay as well and as safe as you can manage. Because we're bursting, we've got all this time on our hands. Many of us aren't working. We're bursting with these ideas. And remember that new ideas are fragile too. If we handle them too much, they get bruised and damaged. To carry on with our, our spring metaphor, let me say that you can't tie a swing to the branch of a sapling. You can't have a brand new baby tree and put a big tire swing on it and hang off of it. We're saplings right now. We're all trying to figure out a new way to do stuff, a new way to be, a new way to take care of one another. And for many of us, we have a really big place in our hearts for all the people who were suffering and struggling before this happened. And that becomes so much more of a present concern because we know that with all the privileged people working to just do the best to take care of ourselves, there is a tendency to think that there will be less people working to take care of the people who already needed help. 
So we will do what we can do. Help where we can help. I've heard lots of people talking about how they don't want to eat out right now or they don't want to go shopping, but they're buying gift cards from their favorite little local stores and restaurants. So that when it feels safe to go out again, we can, um, we can give these folks the money now when they need it and celebrate out together later. And the reality is that some of those stores and restaurants might not be there when this is done. Buy gift cards anyway. If that's something you would do, do your Christmas shopping now and help support the people who are our little retailers and our little restaurants. Somebody just po put on the chat that they just pre-purchased their next haircut. Yeah. Have you heard the joke going around that we're about four weeks away from knowing what everybody's natural hair color is? My last spring metaphor I want to offer up is that if you harvest too much of a new plant that's growing, it won't grow anymore. So if you think about a lettuce that, or a spinach that you might be able to pull some leaves off of, but if you harvest the whole thing, there's nothing left to grow. When my cilantro pokes up, if I pull all the leaves off, it's not going to keep growing, which my wife probably wouldn't mind, but, you know, I'm going to care. So remember that as we are all these little tender green shoots, we're all saplings, we're all, all these ideas and hopes that we have, they're fragile. We don't have to run this like a sprint. This is a marathon. We need to conserve our energy and take care of ourselves. We need to put our own oxygen masks on so that we can continue to help others in any way that we can. Don't use yourself all up in the first week. We don't have to be perfect at this. We just need to be gentle with one another. I don't know if you've noticed online, but the snark is coming out. Because that's what happens when people have time on their hands and they're scared and they're frustrated. And sometimes they get chippy and short with one another. And sometimes we really want to uh, jump in and argue with them, to debate it, to try and calm it down for your own mental health, for your own well-being, you have permission to walk away. You don't have to solve the snark. You don't have to engage with that. You know, we've heard it a lot lately, but Mr. Rogers said, when things are difficult, look for the helpers. What I see on my screen this morning is a whole pile of helpers. And whether you're helping by doing a grocery delivery or sitting on a porch and talking through a doorway, whether you're on the phone talking to people, lots of congregations have arranged a phone tree for our millennial folk, a phone tree is when you have a list of everybody's phone numbers and then you make a plan about, you know, I call everybody on the page that I'm on or I call the next three people. I think that's a great idea that our congregations might want to entertain a phone tree. And if you think I'm being silly explaining it, I've explained it three or four times already this week. For some of our people, their lives were already complex and complicated. We're dealing with immune 
issues we're doing, dealing with um, health issues that already kept us contained or small or protective. And you know, some of these people are our experts in this moment. We've got them in both congregations. Some of these people know how to get through when you can't leave the house, how to manage when your resources are limited, how to make the best of it when you don't, when you can't just get everything you want and you don't know what you need. Some of these people are going to be our experts right now. It's one of those reversals like Lorian's poem was talking about. What you might have thought was a thing that limits and contains you might be the greatest gift that you can give to us right now. And we know your tender shoots too, so don't think that has to be your full-time job. We've held, um, Karen and I have held these uh, how to get onto Zoom sessions and you know, neither of us are super tech geniuses, although Scott has done some miracles. Um, held these tech sessions to get people onto Zoom this week. And then we've been having conversations when they get there. And one of the things we keep hearing is we need more ways to drop in and see each other face to face. And in the week to come, we will be promoting this more and more. So uh, UCE will set up some drop-in Zoom times. Westwood will set up some drop-in Zoom times. I know there's some activities like Westwood has a Freethinker book club. Uh, there's, a, there's an event for that next week. Um, and that will, will show up on Zoom. So there'll be some events and activities that we could do this way that, um, that we can still do them just in this distance format that we're practicing right now. But we're also going to be very intentional about having some drop in times where we can just pop in. I'm going to hold my office hours on Zoom. And so I can't promise anybody any privacy, but man, you can just pop in. Bring your tea or your tequila. You can wear perfume if you want. Lori said I wasn't allowed to say that to you today, but I can't resist. Don't get in bad habits though, because when we get back out together, we don't want to endanger our people. We can do hard things. We're doing it already, and it's just the beginning. We can help each other do hard things. We will work to find ways to be closer than ever while we are physically apart. I like when I've heard people calling it solidarity distancing instead of social distancing. We're keeping that two meter, six foot, keep your bugs out of my house, I'll keep my bugs out of your house. We're doing that to protect all of us. And to be fair, a bunch of us are going to get ill. A bunch of us are likely to have this virus. And what we want to do is not overwhelm the healthcare system so that when we are sick, that there is the support we need. And that we get sleep and eat as well as we can and be kind to one another so that should we get sick, we were as healthy as possible going into it. Make it easy for your friends and your family to do the right thing by saying no. Give them permission to not come in. People get relieved when they feel guilty about wanting to go and check on someone and not visiting them. And if you tell them, you know what, I, I, just want, I just want us all to be safe, it gives them a sense of peace and relief. Give them permission to stay home. I'll close this homily with a story. 13 years ago, next month, the Reverend Brian Kiley officiated a wedding in the sanctuary of the Unitarian Church of Edmonton. 
some of you were there. And as he married my wife and I, we eloped. He said, from this day on, these two people, wherever they are, are home one to the other. Home to one another. We know that it is not our buildings that bind us together. We love our buildings. It's our love that binds us together. It's the connections we forge and maintain to one another as we find our place together. This format may not be ideal, but we're doing our best to be together, home, each to the other. We'll keep creating new ways to do that, safe ways, because no one can take away our sense of home. I wanna invite you to just take one hand, lift it up, and reach around the opposite shoulder. If you have shoulder injuries, don't hurt yourself. And now the other hand to the other shoulder. And now squeeze. Sunday morning hugs are an important part of our life. Everyday hugs are an important part of our life. Maybe every time we meet or we phone or we talk to one another, we could share a hug like that. You are all beautiful, creative people. We can do this. And if you think you can't, that's what loving community is all about. Because we will carry one another until we can carry ourselves. Stay safe, my friends. Blessed be and amen.
to the waves upholding me Hail the great winds urging me on Greet the infinite sea before me Sing the sky my sailor song I was born upon the fathoms Never harbor or port have I known wide universe is the ocean I travel and the earth is my blue boat home. The wide universe is the ocean I travel and the earth is my blue Thank you so much, Brenda. That was the perfect choice for this morning. That piece of music gave me a chance to scroll through. And for those of you I can see, I can tell that many of you are feeling like I'm feeling right now. Our hearts are bursting through our faces. You are not alone. We have distance between us in body, but you are not alone. This is the time when if you have not updated your information in your church directory, if you are not in your church directory, contact your church office. Both of our church administrators are working. Um, Westwood, we've protected the office just for our administrator so she can come in, UCE, um, their administrator is working from home. We're doing everything we can to keep our people safe. If you ever wondered about whether or not you should be in the director directory, you should get in there now. As we end the formal part of this service, we'd, I'd like to thank some of the people who've worked so hard to climb the super steep learning curve to bring this gathering to you this morning and help us be together during an exceptionally tender time. Our emergency online worship team is Karen Belita, Brenda Jackson, Heather McLean Smith, Alara Stephanie Godette. And we are enriched by our distance learning expert at Westwood, Perry Anderson. We've had wonderful tech support, uh, especially from Scott, getting us onto Zoom, getting folks onto Zoom, talking, talking our elders into Zoom. Yay, I'm so proud of you all. And our two of our musicians, um, Carrie Day helped us with tech advice. Sheila Kaloran recorded pieces for us. We would be remiss not to recognize again our boards of trustees who are making hard and complicated decisions on behalf of both congregations to protect people in this time. If I have missed naming anyone, Feel free to type it into the chat there, but please forgive me. I know that we have listeners and drivers and deliverers and all kinds of people out there working together, people checking in on one another faithfully. And keep in your hearts and minds that each of these people I just named was also dealing with their own daily responsibilities, their work, as well as the sudden isolation and disappointments and fears, and in some cases, the heartbreaks brought about by these immediate changes in our lives. To close the formal part of the service, and don't go away yet, let me just say one more time, 
We know that it is not our buildings that bind us together. It is not our physical spaces. It is our love. It's the connections we forge and maintain to one another as we find our places within the interdependent web. This may not be ideal, but we are together, home, each to the other. May you carry that delicate seed with you in the coming days as we navigate the ever-changing new realities and find new ways to be face-to-face, heart-to-heart, and love-to-love. -love. 